Hello, this is Patrick Riley. The first thesis I looked at was written by Michael Hankins entitled The Phantom Menace, the F-4 in Air Combat in Vietnam. This was submitted for a master's degree in science at the University of North Texas in 2013. I gravitated to this subject because I am an aviation enthusiast and archaeologist. The F-4 Phantom II was so named because it was the second Phantom built. In 1945, McDonald developed the FH-1 Phantom for the U.S. Navy and Marine Corps. The FH-1 was the first American jet to take off from an aircraft carrier, the USS Franklin D. Roosevelt. FD-1, which was a prototype, crashed in my neighborhood in 1946. I investigated the crash site in 1996 and recovered the pitot tube with the serial number 11752. The particular aircraft in this slide is air, tail number 111750. The F-4 replaced the Republic F-105 Thunder Chief during the war in Vietnam. Approximately 320 thuds were lost during the war. By all accounts, the F-105 was an extraordinary aircraft and excelled as a platform for dropping ordnance. F-105 pilots were known for consistently getting bombs on target. The F-105 was replaced by the McDonald F-4 Phantom II. Hawkins does a good job of explaining that the F-4 was designed to fly fast and deliver a payload and was designed with the Soviet threat in mind. It was not designed for air-to-air -air combat and early versions did not have a gun. The aircraft's record of low-level bombing was abysmal in the early years of the war and Hawkins does a nice job of explaining all the drawbacks of the F-4 and the modifications made to address these problems. Later variants of the F-4 included photographic reconnaissance versions and radar jamming. One of the things that I found distressing reading this thesis were footnotes on the first page that were longer than the text. And this goes on for about 12 pages. I think this would have been better as an appendix. The rest of the document covers training Tactics, Techniques, and Principles, or TTPs, developed by the Air Force and the Navy to upgrade the F-4. The length of the document is 161 pages. The bibliography for primary sources is three pages, and secondary sources is four pages. Michael Hawkins' is analysis on the history, trials, and tribulations with the F-4 is comprehensive. His conclusion is compelling and thought-provoking, but its title, The Failed Experiment, does not do justice to an airframe that is still in service today and flying 64 years after its first flight. The second thesis I looked at was written by Robert Mahoney entitled, The 1975 Maiguez Incident, an Analysis of Its Historical and Strategic Significance, submitted to George Washington University in partial fulfillment of the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy in 2009. The SS Mayaguez was seized by members of the Camel Rouge on May 12, 1975. The only military personnel immediately available were members of the United States Air Force Security Police. After a helicopter carrying the police crashed in Thailand, the U.S. Marines were brought in and the battle ensued on Koh Tang Island. The hostages were eventually released, but many, many failures occurred during the mission. Mahoney starts out with an in-depth nine-page histor historiographical analysis. He goes on to discuss five major themes regarding the incident. He breaks his dissertation into five sections. The crisis begins, May 13th action and reaction, May 14th rescue force buildup, assault and recovery in aftermath. He closes with a 40-page analysis and conclusion. He includes four pages of references, six pages of unpublished references, and one page of online sources. Mahoney's analysis and conclusion is the most thoroughly researched document I have seen on the Mayaguez incident. The length of this dissertation was 354 pages. I have been taking care of the grave of Edgar C. Moran, one of the security police members killed in the helicopter crash for many, many years. And I, I do plan on reading uh, Robert Mahoney's thesis in its entirety when I get some time, maybe between classes. Thank you very much.